good day to our friends in Beijing. I'm glad to see you again. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to hold this conference with you. Today is a special day. I shall introduce the participant. The moderator today is Mr. Xiao Gangliang, Vice President of GE, Here's the Care China. Mr. Chow got his GP in first time university and practice in law, first in the US and China. He has a good sense of a different both cultures and can make our discussion go on smoothly. He will introduce the speakers and the participants for you. Please, Mr. Zhao. Thank you very much, um, Madam Wang. It is a great honor for me to moderate today's uh, dialogue across the ocean. Um, I guess our U.S. colleagues are sitting in an auditorium-like classroom, and um, that sort of brings fear in me, as, <laughs> as it reminds me of the horrible days that I had at Georgetown Law School. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, as you know, uh, Beijing Arbitration Commission is in the process of finalizing its mediation rules, and uh, BAC hopes to promulgate the rules in April of next year. To that end, BAC held a successful seminar listening to the comments and uh, suggestions from the uh, academicians and practitioners last week. It was a very well attended and a great session. And I'm sure that today's dialogue will continue to serve uh, for that purpose. And we'll be hearing from our US colleagues, uh, Linda Meyer, uh, Professor Peter Robinson, and Professor Thomas Stepanovich from the Pepperdine University. Um, as everybody knows, the Strauss Institute for Dispute Resolution of Pepperdine University has been ranked by the US News and World Report as the number one dispute resolution program four times in seven years. It has on its faculty a number of senior professors and scholars in mediation and is devoted to cultivating talents in mediation and promoting the usage of ADR. On the China side, we have speakers well, well experienced speakers from the China side. We have Mr. Zhang Zaixue, uh, Madam Zhang Yejiao, Mr. Julian Holloway, and Mr. John Bishop. I'll be introducing the Chinese speakers as their turn comes. So right now, I understand the um, US side will be introducing their speakers. So I'm going to yield the floor to our US colleagues. Thank you so much. Um, it is a great pleasure to join our Chinese friends at the Beijing Arbitration Commission in what I hope will be the first of many uh, dialogues across the ocean on a variety of subjects of mutual interest. We're very enthusiastic about assisting you in the creation of these landmark mediation rules and the creation of a new mediation program in 2008. We cherish our relationship with the Beijing Arbitration Center and value Madam Wang Hong Song's important ties to our university, including her involvement with the Strauss Institute's Advisory Council. My understanding is that our dialogue will begin with presentations on three subjects uh, by uh, each of our speakers. Um, I'm going to propose that we begin uh, with a presentation by Nina Meyerding on the role mediators play during mediation and the techniques they use to help resolve disputes. Uh, first of all, I'm pleased to introduce Nina Meyerding, who has been the director and senior mediator of the Mediation Center 
for family law in Ventura, California. She has mediated over 4,000 disputes. She's an adjunct professor here at Pepperdine University School of Law and also at Southern Methodist University. She is an expert on cross-cultural negotiation and communication and has held seminars in England, Ireland, Sweden, Scotland, India, the Netherlands, and throughout the United States. She served as president of the board of directors of the Academy of Family Mediators, one of our leading dispute resolution institutions in the United States, and was on the board of directors of another leading institution, the Association for Conflict Resolution. In 2005, she received the John Haynes Distinguished Mediator Award. So I will now ask Nina uh, to speak on the roles mediators play during mediation and the techniques they use to help resolve disputes. Nina? Thank you, Tom. Um, there's a variety of ways and a variety of styles in the United States. Because there is no credential or specific licensing that applies to all mediators, a lot of mediators use many different styles. One of the styles is more evaluative, and usually the mediator is somebody who has a lot of subject matter expertise, is oftentimes a lawyer or retired judge. They are asked to mediate because they know a great deal about the subject matter area. This kind of mediation usually looks like a, a shuttle diplomacy, what we call caucusing, where the mediator goes back and forth between two separate rooms, does a lot of reality testing, talking to the parties about the strengths as well as the weaknesses of their particular case. These kinds of cases usually involve lawyers on both sides, or many lawyers on both sides, uh, is usually a court-connected or litigated case. We see these kinds of mediation techniques used quite a bit in commercial cases, in cases where uh, the primary issue is one of money. Another style of mediation is what we call facilitative mediation, and that is used especially when people have continuing relationships. So family mediation cases, not just divorce, but adoption, conservatorships, probate issues, parent-teen mediations. We see it used a lot in um, relationships with, within the workforce, employment situations, um, also landlord-tenant, personal injury cases, wrongful death, where there are issues of high emotion. And this style of mediation is much more where the mediator's role is to help the parties not only in dealing with the legal issues, but many of the emotional issues as well. The mediator tends to work much more with the parties in the same room as opposed to the evaluative model where the parties are in separate rooms. This mediator may or may not have a lot of subject matter expertise. Sometimes the parties want this mediator to know a lot about the legal issues because they still will come up. Other times, the mediator is hired simply to help the parties communicate more effectively. Most of us as mediators use both styles. It isn't that we pick one and stay with that. So it usually would be that you would start out in a more facilitative forum, trying to find out a lot about the needs and the interests and what's really going on. And then if you needed to become more evaluative, as far as talking about the law or the pros and cons of the case, then you would move into a separate session. But it is a, a blending of these processes. I do a lot of teaching around the United States, and I see a trend, though, towards the more evaluative style for court cases and litigated cases. And I think that's beca because as more and more lawyers become involved within the mediation world, both representing parties but also as mediators, um, the style that they are used to is the shuttle back and forth. And so there are those of us that are trying very, very hard to continue with the facilitative model to encourage more people to use that because we feel that the durability of the agreements are stronger when the emotions and what is truly happening between the parties is addressed, not just the legal narrow issues and the facts. So those are the two 
primary styles, although we have many offshoots or many other kinds of styles uh, in the field as well. Thank you. I think uh, before uh, we turn to our Chinese colleagues, I will simply transition by saying that while our experience with mediation in the United States uh, is frankly uh, relatively short, we have only been mediating uh, in our present form for about a generation, about 30 years. We know that our Chinese friends have experience with conciliation that goes back for thousands of years. And for that reason, we are particularly interested in learning from you.